Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will quickly see how to connect to Firebase Firestore database and persist data through REST calls. And this is an extension to my previous video, how to build simple web services. If you haven't seen it, I will add a link in the description. If you wish not to see the video, I will add a link to the code to start with. Let's dive in. We will be using uh, Firebase uh, Firestore database. So I am at my Firebase console. Uh, if you are not sure about uh, Firebase, just go to firebase firebase.google.com and uh, it will open you the console to the account and you can click on the go to console here if you don't have a firebase account it will ask you to just create one with your uh, gmail id it's free and uh, you can create a project here like add project it will ask you to add the project name firebase demo 2 since i already have firebase demo 1 continue enable everything continue select an account this is my account create project and the project is ready once you go to the project uh, you see this database on the left menu bar click on it and uh, create a database there you go we will start in the test mode and it will ask you the location you can choose uh, whatever location is near to you uh, i will be choosing a us central location so it created a database named uh, fir demo to some number and in this database, this is a NoSQL database and not uh, a relational database like MySQL or Oracle database. We'll start a collection and we will give the name users. That's it. And we can give the, specify the fields to the name, name, page, location. Let it be simple. Test 50 Dallas. Age can be a number, but I will just leave it for string because uh, the earlier code we had is a string. So just leave it there. If you see here, it created a, a document ID with this and it created the field. Try to give, add a document. It says like, if you don't give any document ID here, it will auto generate for you. So you can give an ID while you are working through the code and not an auto generated code. So let's go back to our project uh, on Eclipse. So here is our previous project, uh, which had uh, four endpoints to get user details, create the user, update the user and delete the user. We will now connect uh, to the Firebase database that we created and uh, we will persist data, retrieve data and update the data using these endpoints. Uh, to have a connection to the Firebase database, uh, we need to add uh, the Firebase dependency. It's a Firebase admin dependency. So, so we'll pick the latest version, 6.11. And this is all you need. So once we add this dependency, we will have all the Firebase related uh, classes that we need to use to connect to the Firebase available for us uh, in our Maven dependencies folder here. There you go. You see the Firebase here? It already imported 6.11 jar for us to use. So we had our dependency added. Now let's go and create a Firebase initialize class, which will open the connection to the Firebase. I'll create a package called service package, which I'll have a class called Firebase initialize. So I have this class. I will have the method And we will have the connection details here. So in order to connect to the Firebase, you need a key which is uh, unique to your account and that you can create on the Firebase. Let's go back to the Firebase console here. And if you go to the settings here, project settings, so you can see the service accounts here, go here and it shows you what is the code that you need to connect to the database. Uh, so you can copy this and paste it back. But if you see here, it has a path to the service account key.json. So you need to generate a, a private key here. Let's create it and generate the key. So make sure you are not saving that key in a public repository when you are doing a production kind of stuff for local stuff, it should be fine enough. So let me change the name of it to service account. And I want this uh, in my project. So I will save it to my project here. So let's go back to the project and let me refresh it. So if you see the service account.json file is already here. Now let's go back and copy this whole thing here. So it says path to the service account. So let me just 
keep this. It means it is in the home directory and it will look for the service account key. Whatever JSON file is has a different name. We will have the service account.json. And if you see this set credentials of Google credentials from stream service account, which we defined above and the database URL. So if you go back here to the database, it has 8920F. That's what I add it here. So it will be connected to the 8920F. Now go back to our project. So we are back in the project. All right. You got everything we needed for the connecting. You want this connection to happen when the application startup. So how do you do that? So first we need to define this as a service so that the Spring Boot recognizes it as a service. And then there is an other annotation called at post construct. What it does is when you add this annotation, it will know that it has to be run during the startup. Once we had this annotation here, it will try to make a connection to Firebase during the startup itself. We need to add a try catch here if something error comes up. We will add a try catch here to catch any exceptions that occurred during this operation. All right, we are done here and we have this initializing class ready to go. Now we need to have a service class where it actually uses this connection and try to persist data into the five store database. Let's go ahead and create a new class, Firebase service class. We will define this class also as a service class so that a spring recognizes it as service. So we will have a function here to create the data. It should be a public function. So this function will take person object as input and returns the string. We need to connect to the Firebase database using the connections that we had in the Firebase initialize class. For that, we will use Firestore, which is our database. This will get the database with the connection that we have created earlier. Once we got this, we need to get the collections from this database. And the collection we created is users collection. We need to queue the document ID. If you don't give a document ID here, as we seen earlier, it will create an auto generated ID. I will create the document ID using the person's name. We created the document ID and we will set the collection now. And we are returning a string here. So let's return the timestamp of when this collection is being created. before going if you see here it says unheralded exception throw this exception back there you go these are the two exceptions that might be thrown while doing this operations uh, with the fire store go ahead and uh, start the application see what's going on here let's go back to rest demo controller here and the operation we wrote is for the create user we will return we will import the service auto wire the service we created Now from here, if you see, we are calling the Firebase service and the method in that to save the user detail details, the person, which we will get it from the request body. Let's go ahead and start it. The starter, I'm opening my Postman here. So it opened in localhost 8080. Let's create user, create user. And I don't have to give any of these in the body. I will create a user with name day Roger 40. Let's see what happens. I'm doing a get request here instead of post. Let's see what happens. There you go. It says 200 OK and it returned the timestamp it created. Now let's go back uh, to the Firestore database and see if it actually persisted the data. There you go. If you see this, it created a document with the document ID Roger and it has the field that we just passed. Now we have done creating the user operation. Now we will do a different operation like getting the user, updating the user and deleting the user. Now I'll go back to my service class and I will have a couple of other methods.
we will have the same connection with the firestore database there you go we got the client for it and here if you see earlier we got the api future object but when you are trying to get the data you will actually will get a document reference uh, for that particular document name and then we need to retrieve the api future object from the document reference In the collection we used is users the document name would be the name this is where you pass the document id now we got the document reference here we need the document snapshot that we need to retrieve from the document reference So this will get you the API future of the type document snapshot if you see here. Once we got the document snapshot, all we need to extract that uh, document snapshot from the API future object, which is actually the document we wanted. See, this get will return the document snapshot. All right. Now we have the document here what we will do is so now we need to convert this document object to the person object that we are supposed to return in null object if the document exists we will assign that person to the object we received since if you see the person object here it has string name age and location try to convert a google snapshot class would try to convert that object that we received to the person class if the variables are of same type within it if not it might throw an error let's go ahead and return the person object if the document doesn't exist we would return null Let's go back to our controller class here the get user details we will get the name and we will return the firebase service dot get user details of name and we should add the throws declaration here so that it can throw an exception now let's restart now we will perform the get operation here to get the details and in the headers we are passing the name of we created this roster object earlier now we will try to retrieve that object there you go the one we created earlier is being returned now we'll quickly perform the update operation and delete operation as well go back to the fiber service and we will have two more functions So the update operation is similar to the save operation we'll just copy paste it here beauty is when you are trying to get the document with the name if the name exists it will try to update the document and if the name doesn't exist it will try to create the document so basically we can use the same but uh, to show it i will just use it here uh, to update it so now since we had this let's go ahead and uh, try to do the update operation we need to change uh, this back to calling the firebase service actually let me rerun it go back to the port and do the put operation with update user and have the body now i'll change the age 50 roger is getting old and location back to florida for retirement See, it returned the timestamp the user got updated. Let's go back to Firestore and see if it actually got updated. There you go. So the beauty of Firestore is updates are like really instant. If you have the Windows side by side, you should be able to see it. The moment you clicked on that send request, it will update here. That's the beauty of it. Now we'll do the final operation, delete operation. 
similar to that we will create a new function to delete we'll have the connection to the firestore we'll get the api future object what we need to do is we need to get the collection like earlier which is the user's collection and get the document we want to delete using the name which is actually the document id and just delete that's all you need to do and return document with id has been deleted and we will update our controller class to call this that's it let's restart we'll do the delete operation and give the name roger that we created boom document to diary roger has been deleted now let's go back to the Five stores. There is no user with ID Roger. It has been deleted. So let's do all the four operations quickly to see what's happening here. I will try to have this side by side for our convenience. It created the user. And let me get the user details with Roger. There you go. We got the details here, Roger 50 Florida. Now let me update the details. Let's make him a little bit older. Now he can completely retire. There you go, see? It's very quick. And let's delete the user. There you go has been deleted right the only document left is david which i don't want to delete it now we saw the basic crud operations create read update and deleting operations using spring boot and connecting to the firestore database i hope this helps thank you